Yo, what is going on everybody? Thank you for tuning in. My name is Cody Vondell and today we are going to take a look at how to turn your Y2K aesthetic logo into a 3D revolving icon using After Effects and Element. Before we get started, just wanted to say thank you all so much for tuning in, liking, subscribing, sharing my videos, commenting on everything. It means so much to me and I greatly appreciate it. I recently did a free icons template giveaway. It's over 75 free vector-based icons with the Y2K aesthetic look. You can download these, use them in all of your own work. And if you're working along, make sure to hop on our Discord, post what you're working on. We have a variety of artists, people who are just getting started sharing their work for the first time to experienced professional graphic designers. We've got a really fun community over there. I'm super thankful for everybody. Let's take a moment to take a look at some of the stuff everybody's been creating. As always, you guys are crushing it and I appreciate you submitting the work that you're doing. If you wanna support my channel, make sure to head over to my Etsy where you can pick up all kinds of stickers. And if you like my intro, outro, background music, I create it all, so make sure to hit up Cody Vondell on Spotify or your preferred streaming service. You can also find me on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. And you can also find me on Instagram, Cody Vondell, Twitter, Cody Vondell, you know where to find me. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we are going to do is open up our free Y2K template. These are all the icons we've been making on previous uh, episodes. And we're gonna take Technico and we're gonna open it up in Photoshop. And we're gonna make it nice and big. And what we're gonna do is we are going to select all of the black. I was using the white outlines to kind of add some separation between like some of our icons and text and stuff. So what we're gonna do right now is pretty much get all of the black part on one layer and then we are going to create out a new outline on that layer and we're going to export both of them separately so that we have one layer that is the actual Technico in black and the other outline will be the, or the other image will be the outline without the actual text inside. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. Cool, that's looking good. And we'll fill in right here and there. That's perfect, that's exactly what we want. And now we can rasterize that layer style, and we're gonna export these things. Actually, we're going to get rid of the black, so it's only that, that purple outline. And it doesn't have to be purple, it can be whatever color you want. We're just using purple right now to just kind of separate our two colors. Boom, so we're gonna get rid of that, and cool, perfect. So we have the two, uh, I, I'm gonna export these as PNG files, so that's probably what you need to do as well. Um, so now we're going to drag these two PNG files over here onto our timeline. We're gonna scale them down just a little bit so they fit within our 1920 by 1080 uh, perimeter. And let's go ahead and create a new solid. Actually, what we need to do is create outlines for both of these layers, for Technico and Technico uh, outline. So we're going to go to Auto Trace, and we've got both of those auto traced. And now we can just hide the original layers. We don't need them anymore now that we have the auto traced version of them. And you wanna make sure to do the auto tracing separately on both layers, do not do them together. Cool, so now we have two auto traced outlines of Technico and Technico's outline. Perfect. Um, we're going to add a, another new element or another new solid and we're going to drag element 3D onto that. And if we want to, we can rename it, rename the layer element if we want. So the first thing we need to do is go to our custom layers, custom text and masks. And for our paths one and two, we are going to make them the auto, tra auto trace Technico outline and auto trace Technico. So this is how we are going to create the 3D uh, revolving icon is using these outlines in elements. So we're going to scene setup. And the first thing we can do is hit extrude. Perfect, so that's our outline model. Already looking cool. Um, this obviously isn't gonna be what it looks like finished, but you, you get an idea of where we're going with this. So um, next thing I think we should do is probably go down to our materials. We're gonna add some uh, nice shiny chrome. Just drag it right on there, boom. Cool, cool. And uh, the third thing that I think we'll do for this layer is we'll go to environment 
we're gonna switch out this background with something that I have come up with that I think works a lot better. Um, it's just some blurred out mountains, sunset kind of stuff, and it really just makes the metallic reflective chrome stuff just really look cool. So now that that has been applied, well, let's see, apply it. There we go. Now that that's been applied, um, we're gonna get this really cool, super shiny kind of, it's, you got the blues and the oranges and the pinks and stuff, it's just super cool looking. So that is one layer. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna duplicate this uh, group. And this one, we're going to go to extrusion model and we're going to change it to custom path two. And that's going to show us not the outline, but the actual Technico layer. And we are going to apply some green light on this one. So we get a really cool like slime green kind of kind of look to it. Perfect. And uh, we'll adjust them a little bit so that we get something looking really cool. We need to push this back just a little bit. So go back to scene setup. That's cool. So we've rotated it just a little bit, um, just to kind of think flat forward. It wasn't bad looking, but that rotation just makes it look extra cool. We've pushed it back just a little bit. And we're making sure to enable both layers, because if both layers aren't enabled, you're only going to see one of them. So make sure both layers and element are turned on. And then we are gonna go to particle rotation and go ahead and get our keyframes situated. So we want the full rotation to start at zero and in, I think this is a six second uh, project. So we're just going to put the full rot rotation at the end. And then um, since we have two different groups in element, one for our outline and one for our main layer, we're going to have to apply that same thing on both of them. Cause if you don't, you're gonna get a rotating, one of them is gonna rotate and one of them's not. So that's important to make sure that you're applying the same rotation keyframing to both layers, but I mean, both layers within the element layer itself. That might be a little confusing if you're not a little familiar with After Effects. So uh, let's see what's the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the camera on so that camera is going to make sure that we're, we're right here looking at it and it can rotate and we're not going to have any kind of issues with it like falling off the screen or, or you know, touching the edges coming off the screen or anything like that. So that's important. Um, the next thing that we're going to do now that that is working and we have some we have it uh, turned on full right now um, You can go down there and turn turn your your uh, project to like quarter view and that's probably what I should have done here, but that's okay So that our third Step that we're gonna do I guess as far as styling goes is we're going to create a glow effect on that uh, green So it really feels slimy and oozy and all we've done is add Gaussian blur and add green and we've turned down the opacity some, and we brought that layer in front of the original layer. And our final step to get the crazy warping look is uh, we've just already keyframed in here some optic compensation. So we started, uh, I always put the reverse distortion on so it starts really massive and then fades into the screen. It's something really cool that I use way too much, but it just looks so cool, can't help it. If you're wondering how I do it, it's optic compensation in After Effects. So we've got to go ahead and start doing that. That's perfect. Um, and this this last little step that we're taking right now, in my opinion, is something that you can do for fun. But if you want something that rotates endlessly, like never ends, you probably don't want to add this um, little final step that we just added, just because what we're doing here is making it look really cool one time and it doesn't really lend itself to a continuous revolving, rotating, whatever you want to call it. Um, so essentially, we're, we're pretty much looking at a final version of the project right here. So we've taken it all the way from Illustrator, brought it into Photoshop, brought it into After Effects, added an Element 3D, uh, some other extra stuff. Right now, our final step is adding Retro Dither. So what Retro Dither does, it's not a free um, plugin, but it's worthwhile. It can take anything that you've created in high resolution and make it look like it was being played on like a Sega Dreamcast or a PlayStation. Um, it has all kinds of uh, retro 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit, all the all these different things right here. So uh, you can play around with all these different styles, dithering, downscale, and uh, you're gonna wind up with something that looks really cool. So this is just kind of showing you sort of what some of these different combinations look like. But we're not gonna use any of those combinations. We're going to stick with the original one that I had already used because I thought that was looking really clean. And uh, we're pretty much uh, there. This is our final product. Pretty simple to make. 
Um, the cool thing is you can do this kind of stuff in Cinema 40 or in Blender. Um, I chose Element just because I'm in After Effects all the time editing video. So it just makes sense to have a 3D plugin in there. Some of the members uh, on our Discord channel are doing the exact same kind of stuff, only using uh, Blender. So that's our video for today. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We are also gonna be taking a look at a free Photoshop brush kit. It's uh, allowing us to kind of get a metal heart, uh, vector heart kind of look. I also got another really cool gig working on flyers for more cadence shows, uh, drum and bass shows. So uh, we're gonna be breaking down one that I put together for Tim Reaper. Um, and also we are going to take a little look at a Y2K virtual gallery that I was a part of back in 2020 before the whole COVID pandemic started. Um, this was just a really innovative, cool project that I was really fortunate to be a part of. A lot of other really cool artists in the Y2K scene were on there. So uh, we're just gonna take a little tour and see what all, what all was going on there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Please make sure to hit like, subscribe, head on over to my Etsy, pick up some stickers. Make sure to go stream some of my music on Spotify or your preferred streaming service. Thank you all so much. I'll see you on our next video. Thank you.